being our host here. Uh, if you want to purchase something back at the, the window there, feel free to. Um, another thing, uh, our wonderful tea party that's organized this, all their brilliant talent and their time and their efforts. We have Rick Bruce, Rick Berry, Michael Israel, Josh Shouse in the back. I think I saw Josh Holt here. We have wonderful people who have stepped outside their comfort zone like we've been encouraged to today. Um, I remember the first time I came to a tea party and stepped outside my comfort zone. And I hope that you'll think about that, as Richard said, do something on election day. Do something you haven't done before. Do one more thing and see if that can make a difference. Um, at this time, I would like to invite our congressional candidates to come up and take their seats. And uh, while they're doing that, I'm going to do a shameless plug for Rick and Rick at Night, again, Monday night on Wiki 95.3, or you can listen on at wiki.com online. And their guests will be two people you've already heard, uh, Richard Murdoch and Jim Lucas. Uh, both of them I would call true warriors. That means they're not afraid to fall on their sword for us. So I hope that these gentlemen will prove to us that they'll be warriors for us when Start they get this job. Yeah. Thank you. And this is Rick Bruce, who will be the moderator. Thanks, Lisa. Is it Richard Murdoch? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. uh, we have a, you can go to richardmurdoch.com and sign up as far as working the polls. We also have a a, uh, a tablet outside the door, outside the tip bucket, if you like donations, that kind of thing. Uh, if you want to sign up, we also, if you want to be uh, part of the uh, War Eagle email tree, we've got about 1,200 people around here now uh, as far as what, uh, what we're doing and what we're going to do uh, as far as conservatism. Uh, and I also like to recommend, or recommend, uh, recognize my good friend, Senator, uh, State Senator Jim Smith in the back. And he's one of the best. I took my radio buddy, uh, Rick Berry, who Mandy Connell constantly thinks I am. <laughs> and I called him and said, Is this Rick Berry? <laughs> oh, it's just me and him. <laughs> the best I could. I heard <laughs> But uh, I said, If I'm wrong about Richard Murdoch, if I'm wrong about Jim Smith, if I'm wrong about, uh, wrong about Judd, you know, Judd, you got to come up here because you're going to be a panelist. Um, I quit. And I'm not, I'm not planning on quitting. These guys are got a consistent set of core beliefs. Jim Lucas over there. Um, these are the champions. The reason why we're here right now is a debate. We have to replace Mike Pence as 6th District Congressman. Those are big shoes to fill. On February 20th, we appealed to all the candidates, all six candidates, to be here today. Four of them are here. Two of them other, two other people, they're, they're elsewhere. They had different commitments. But I appreciate the fact that all of you four gentlemen are here. I appreciate the fact that all four of you gentlemen are willing to stand up and put it on the line as far as saying, I want to represent the 6th District in the United States House of Representatives. I'd like everybody to stand up and give them a standing applause right now. Okay, the rules in this debate, Rick Berry is going to be our timekeeper. And State Representative Jeff McMillan and uh, Dr. Michael Israel will be the panelists that will be posing the questions. Now, we've got a little different twist on it this time. Our candidates are not going to be debating each other. They're going to be debating Barack Hussein Obama. <laughs> <laughs> and our, our friend Josh South, who is a techno champion of us, is going to... Is, is that blocking the, the way? We're going, to do vi are we going to do video, we're going to do video clips as well as the audio clips. You guys cannot hear what our historic leader is saying. I want you to let me know because I have not copied down. I don't, I don't have the, the questions. But you're going to be asked questions in alphabetic order. It's going to start out Bates, Frazier, Sizemore, Van White, and then we're going to go to, to Bill, and then we're going to come, we're going to just keep going up and down as long as we can. You're going to have two minute opening statements. That's not a long time. We'll cut it down because we had an extra guy show up. That's a good thing. 
You're going to have a two-minute closing, but you're going to have two minutes to answer the questions that are posed. Okay? Now, this is being recorded on Channel 15 down here. This will go to Switzerland County and Jefferson County five times next weekend. So I'm sorry the other guys didn't show up. That's a problem. Don't mind. But you guys showed up. We're also going to cut it into YouTube clips. We're going to have Murdoch's speech. We're going to have uh, Judd's speech. We're going to have Jim's speech. We're going to have the Tea Party Express. We're going to have this debate. We're going to have it all on YouTube. I want you all to send it out to your, your email trees because you all got some. Okay? Uh, we're going to do an audio clip of Obama, followed by a question to each other. It's the same question. Uh, two minute answer, and your, your answers are going to be directed at Barack Hussein Obama, <laughs> our historic leader. <laughs> Candidates will abide by Reagan's rule Thou shalt not speak ill of other conservatives. So I'll, I'll put this mic, if you want to hold on the microphone, that's fine. It, it really is sensitive enough that you can, you can hear you right here. But we'll start with Don Bates, then Bill uh, Frazier, Joe Sizemore, Joe Van Wyne. Okay, thank you. And keep watching Dr. Israel here as far as the time. You'll see this when you have 20 seconds left in your two minutes. I'll hold it up. Half tempted to run for President of the United States since I have to debate Obama today. <laughs> Good afternoon, Jefferson County. It is an honor to be with you all today. And this is our final debate. And I applaud my colleagues for being here today. And those who chose not to show, well, that's telling in and of itself. But I'm thrilled that you are here. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk presidential politics for just a moment. I will have to tell you that it doesn't appear my guy is going to be the nominee. But I want you to know for the record, I will walk through fire to make sure Barack Obama is a one-term president. And I hope he's going to be <laughs> Secondly, I'm running for Congress because I share Mike Pence's passion for true conservatism. And it is very important to me that we keep this seat in strong conservative hands. I also believe that we need the right experience on Capitol Hill to replace Congressman Pence. And I stand before you today as a financial advisor with almost 20 years experience in the financial services industry and as a small business owner. Our nation is now $16 trillion in debt. And two years ago, as Richard Murdoch was telling you, when our, uh, two years ago I told a crowd of people that our AAA credit rating was in jeopardy. And now two years later, ladies and gentlemen, we have lost our AAA credit rating and the end is not in sight. And so I'm asking you to send a financial advisor to Washington who not only shares Mike Pence's passion for true conservatism, but who's lived it every day of his life. I look forward to your questions today, and thank you for being here. Say, is it noon yet? It's Maude Decker. I apologize for being late. Uh, I was going to fly the airplane down, but one thing that uh, us pilots in our fraternity talk about, you know, there are old pilots and there are bold pilots, <laughs> but there aren't any old, old pilots. <laughs> there was a line of thunderstorms up here, so I chose to drive. I've been here a little earlier and I left. Anyway, my name is Bill Frazier. I'm a farmer, grandfather, seven grandchildren. Uh, as I've indicated, a pilot on clear days. Uh, I've worked uh, all of my life, and my wife, the other day, I, well, not the other day, the last seven, eight years, she's got angry because I keep shouting at the television, you know, this country's going to the dogs. Quit yelling at the television, here's some money, go run for office again. So here I am. Uh, we're paying our own way, by the way. My, my wife, this is my wife's money I'm using. Uh, uh, we earned it together. Uh, I've reduced what I want to do in writing. You all have some brochures on your table. If you don't, I've got more in the truck. I'll bring them in. Uh, two minutes is not a very long time to uh, tell them about what we want to try to do. I'm going to take one quick story, 20 seconds. I, I was a state senator, freshman, Smith, you know that feeling. 
I stood between Ed Whitcomb and Otis Bowen. Otis Bowen wanted to raise taxes. I came to the legislature not to raise people's taxes. Ed Whitcomb and I were on the same page. There are Republicans in Delaware County that are the ones that are still alive are angry at me this very day because I said no. But that's precisely what I will do if you choose to send me to the United States House of Representatives. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Let me look around here and know, know everybody, so I get them nervous. My name is Joe Sidemore from Matamora, uh, Franklin County, in Indiana. Hour and ten minutes from here, I believe. I don't know if this means anything, but I am I am an elected Republican right now in my county. I'm the councilman for District 1 for County Council. Two years ago, our county was the same as what Bill said, tired of seeing, reading. Our county is in a mess. I'd always been the kind of guy that, well, somebody's got it. You know, somebody's taking care of it. You know, somebody's got it. Well, somebody's got it, all right. I mean, look at the mess we're in. <laughs> okay, I ran for office. I won the primary. I won the general, 82% of the vote in my district. Okay, when Pence said he was going to go, you know, run for governor. And I met some of these guys at a Republican deal in our county. I uh, always wanted to do something like this, and it weighed on my heart for a long time, and finally I just decided to do it. And this is where I've come to today, and I mean, it's been, I'll tell you what, you talk about courage. You walk into the Attorney General's office in Indianapolis and file for this job. I mean, hey, now, that's... And then go tell people you want to do it for an 8% job approval rating. I mean, I'm, I'm batting 100% Franklin County. You know, I mean, everything I do is for the people there. I mean, it's every decision. And, and, and if I get elected to this, I'm going to be a crook, no good. I mean, and, and I'm not used to that. And I was talking to Jed, I'm like, hey, man, what, you know, what am I doing here? But, little background, wife, 22 years, three kids. Got you. <laughs> Two daughters going to the prom tonight, so I had to go. I worked, I left home when I was 17, so they graduated. I worked in the same shop in Shelbyville. Uh, if I do this, I'll have to quit two jobs. My elected one, the one I have in the factory I've had for. So, is that it? Oh. Wrap up. Uh, and uh, it's good to meet you all. I mean, it kind of gets me easier here telling you that. And, and you know, it is. I'm nice to meet everybody. Oh. Hello, I'm the most local person. I'm from Madison here, and I appreciate everybody coming out here. And I was going to tell you about my dream, but I think everybody's already heard about my dream, haven't you? So I'm not going to tell you about my dream. I ain't going to tell you why I decided I would like to. You want to hear about my dream? I want to hear about my dream. All right, just want to hear about my I had this really weird dream the other night. Uh, some people might even call it a nightmare. All night long I dreamt I was a muffler. Isn't that weird? I tossed and I turned and it kept reoccurring and I was so tempted by the dream I woke up the next morning exhausted. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that. Anyway, uh, the reason I run for Congress is because I am so tired of the direction that the country is going. Is anyone else tired of the direction that the country is going? Yeah. There you go. I don't like to sit on the sidelines and gripe and complain how other people do it. I like to get involved. I'm the same way at my church. I hate it when someone in church gripes about how things other people do. So I'm one of those who's going to get in and do their best to, to, uh, to do their best to, to make it better. I'm coming to you as a working man. I've never held any political office. I've never done anything like that. And I know what it's like. I, I work with the public. Um, I work um, for Lifetime Resources. And you may see our band in our town called Catch Your Eyes. Anyone ever see them? And I work with elderly and I work with low income people. And I'm, I've asked many people, um, what do you think about our Congress? And, and they do have a very low approval rate, somewhere around 8%. And um, I think we need to send more conservative, more people with Christian values. And that's why I am. I'm a Christian first, then I'm a, a conservative, then I'm a Republican.